Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning uh, viewer, thank you so much for the support and oh, thank you so much for always liking my videos, commenting, encouraging me, supporting me, sharing and if you're new, please make sure you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can know every time I upload because this is the place where we get to react together to different videos um, and yeah, interesting and learn from everything. So my question here is, have you ever heard about the land of Punt? Have you ever heard about it? Let me know because here, if you haven't, I'm going to educate you today about this ancient country which disappeared from history and so we're here to understand why and how and yeah what what went what what, <laughs> what went down okay so welcome and let's get straight to this video if there is one thing we can count on the ancient egyptians for it's documentation mm -hmm. they kept detailed records of everything from the lives of their pharaohs and the qualities of their gods to the weather and harvests to their trading expeditions with their neighbors like the utopian land of punt the problem is, there is no record of the land of Punt aside right. from the ancient Egyptian sources. And, they right. don't and so you have so many people uh, that claim that the land of Punt is the present Somalia. And so I know, uh, and then you can tell from so many things they share, so many um, things when it comes to the culture, to, uh, to the trade, when you look at it, the way trade used to be done back in the days. So a lot claim that the land of Punt is the modern Somalia. So let's have a discussion in the description box. Let's go. Mention exactly where the land of Punt was located, so archaeologists have yet to find any evidence of this mythical place. How did an entire ancient country disappear from history? According to the ancient Egyptian sources, the land of Punt was a prosperous, mm -hmm. peaceful nation rich in resources. The Egyptians documented many successful trading missions with the people of Punt, trading their valuable goods for Punt's exotic spices, wild animals, slaves, and other treasures. Trading parties returned to Egypt loaded with precious items like gold, obsidian, ebony, and staves of wood, which were exceedingly rare in the Egyptian desert. Punt right. was also apparently... Right, and when you think about it, uh, Somalia is a very rich country. If you haven't watched um, you know, my videos when we're talking about Somalia, when Wodemaya was in Somalia, you can tell that Somalia is a rich country with so many resources and they're building the country now after years of civil war. So you can tell that Somalia comes from way back, way back where it was rich, it was a rich country, full of resources, full of gold, full of, you know, diamonds and stuff like that. So. Um, it, it makes sense to me when we say that Somalia is the is the mod I mean Pont, the land of Pont is a modern Somalia because it just coincides uh, historically when it comes to different things. So I don't know, let's let's talk about it. Let me know what you think. Renowned for its myrrh or so let's hear that again, sorry. Precious items like gold, obsidian, ebony, and staves of wood, which were exceedingly rare in the Egyptian desert. Mm -hmm. Punt was also apparently renowned for its myrrh, a resin used to make incense, which was very important for Egyptian temple rituals. Mm -hmm. Ancient Egyptian paintings depict the people of Punt as looking very different from the Egyptians. Punt men had long hair and very little facial hair. The people lived in round huts on stilts, which means they likely lived in an area prone to flooding. The paintings also depicted palm and myrrh trees and exotic animals. While it's helpful to have a wealth of information about the land of Punt from the ancient Egyptian sources, it's odd that no other sources from the time mention the land of Punt. Does this mean that the people of Punt only dealt with the Egyptians? That's pretty unlikely. Mm -hmm. Ancient civilizations, especially ones as advanced as the land of Punt appear to be, relied heavily on their alliances with various other tribes and peoples. Ancient alliances were constantly shifting, and a nation that depended on only one ally likely wouldn't survive long in the right. ancient world. It's possible that other civilizations that interacted with the land of Punt called them by a different name, or that their records didn't survive the centuries to make it to us. Besides, no one in ancient times was as meticulous about record keeping as the Egyptians. Egyptian. It's also odd that the Egyptians didn't go to war with the land of Punt. It was extremely common for the ancient Egyptians to take over the lands of their enemies. Exactly, and uh, it makes sense because Egyptians, uh, you know, they would they loved conquering you know, different parts, uh, especially when it comes to things that they can, 
get from that particular land or country. And so in this case, I mean, they got the ensigns from there, they got uh, different resources from the land of thorns and stuff like that. So it was only normal when you think about, um, you know, history time uh, back in the days for them to want to conquer this land so they don't um, waste money buying things from them, but it will belong to them. I, I don't know if it makes sense. Does it make sense? <laughs> Does it make sense? So let me know. Um, yeah, so it completely makes sense when it comes to Egyptians as well. And even conquer their weaker allies. Mm -hmm. The land of Punt was rich in resources and would appear to have been ripe for Egyptian conquest. So why didn't they try to take control of this prosperous land? Perhaps it was too far away from the center of Egyptian power, okay. or maybe the people of Punt were more formidable than the Egyptian sources make them out to be. They may have even had alliances with more powerful civilizations that helped keep the power-hungry Egyptians in check. So, where was the land of Punt? The Egyptian descriptions of the land of Punt and its people do give us some clues about the possible location of this ancient settlement. Some of the animals shown in the Egyptian paintings of Punt are known to live primarily on the Arabian Peninsula, around the Red Sea. However, many of the trading goods from Punt that were most prized by the Egyptians may point to it being located south of Egypt in northern Africa. Still, others think it may have never existed at all except in Egyptian myth. Unfortunately, the ancient Egyptians didn't think to leave us a map or detailed directions, so we still have no idea where exactly the land of Punt was. For all we know, it's buried under the sand, if it even existed at all. The first documented mention of the land of Punt in the ancient Egyptian sources dates to around 2500 BCE, during the Old Kingdom period the age of the pyramid builders. The Palermo Stone is one of the best sources of information available to us about the first five dynasties of ancient Egypt. The large piece of black basalt stone is inscribed on both sides with hieroglyphic text, and it was originally part of a much bigger piece that likely stood in an ancient Egyptian temple or other important place. The Palermo Stone lists the names of each ruler, as well as a list of memorable events from each year of their reign. Yeah, and that is uh, proof that the Egyptians really were so good at keeping records and I and I believe they've taught the modern world um, so much about the ways of life back in the days um, and in this case about the land of food so I don't think it was like it's it's a mistake I think it's a land that really existed or probably the Egyptians named it the land of Punt, you know and probably it was just it was just uh, just a small part. I don't know. I have no idea. But um, yeah, Egyptians were very precise. So I believe this is a land that over the years, probably the trade stopped uh, due to the different circumstances. Could it be war or this and that? And yeah, I just, it just became less popular. And maybe the Egyptians discovered other places where their resources were probably near there, you know, near, near Egypt and abandoned slowly by slowly the land of Pun, which is probably the modern Somalia. <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, I don't know if it makes sense, but that's how I would try and, and, and explain it, actually, the, the reason as to why the land of Pun disappeared. Is it buried under the sand? Maybe. Or it just happened that, you know, yeah, that it, um, that, um, it just, the Egyptians stopped going there. So, the history records just disappeared slowly by slowly, so it could explain it. Giving us a year-by-year -year rundown of the major moments in ancient Egyptian life. Mm -hmm. During the fairly peaceful and prosperous reign of King Sahur from around 2487 BCE to 2475 BCE, the Palermo Stone shows the first record of a trading mission to the exotic land of Punt. The trading party returned home with more than 20,000 staves of wood for building ships, tools, and cities. This was an incredibly valuable trade, considering that wood was extremely hard to find in the desert around Egypt. The party also brought back 6,000 measures of gold, a good amount of exotic aromatic spices, and 80,000 measures of myrrh. As the study of ancient Egypt took off, so did the number of theories about the land of Punt. By the 1850s, the new Antiquities Service of Egypt had been established in response to the rampant ransacking of tombs by amateur archaeologists and Egyptophiles early in the century. This new organization protected these valuable historic sites from treasure hunters and kicked off more than a century and a half of proper research into the ancient Egyptians and their neighbors. However, legitimizing the study of ancient Egyptian sources did not solve the riddle of the location of the land of Punt. Heinrich Karl Bruchst was a German Egyptologist who first traveled to Egypt in 1853, where he met French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette. 
Despite working closely together, the two scholars came to drastically different conclusions about the location of the Land of Punt. Brooks was confident that mention of the prized aromatic spices that the Land of Punt were known for pointed to it being located on the Arabian Peninsula. Mariette, on the other hand, had discovered a hieroglyph that listed Punt among other lands to the wow. south of Egypt. That yeah. combined with wall Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, with a different version, it's always confusing because you... You know, we all have different perspectives and different ways of looking at things. So, yeah, it only makes sense that they they agree to disagree because by the end of the day, it just came probably that first, I mean, went through the same spot, which would be um, the northern Africa. And so it's still a mystery up to date, I, I believe. But um, it's it's it would be so nice if one day this mystery was solved so we can really know if the land of Pond really existed or is it a myth or I don't know. It would be really nice to know. Paintings of the land of Pond depicting animals that were distinct to Africa mm -hmm. led Mariette to conclude that the land of Pond must have been located in northern Africa near present-day Somalia. Right. The area was famous in ancient times for its aromatics, especially myrrh, which was highly prized by the Egyptians. To this day, the semi-autonomous region within modern Somalia, located at the very tip of the Horn of Africa, goes by the name of Puntland. Mm -hmm. While this might seem to add credibility to Mariette's theory, the name was actually chosen in 1998 okay. because of the theory that this was the original location of the land of Punt. Relations between the ancient Egyptians and the people of Punt appeared to remain friendly throughout the centuries. No small miracle in brutal ancient times. Trading expeditions continued throughout the Middle Kingdom period, with sources listing expeditions of 3,000 men and more traveling to Punt to trade. Some of the best information we have about the land of Punt and its people come from the New Kingdom period. A large relief painted in the burial temple of female Pharaoh Hatshepsut, who ruled Egypt for 20 years around 1450 BCE, depicts a large trading mission to the land of Punt as one of the greatest accomplishments of her reign. The relief provided many important clues about Punt, including depictions of the people, their homes, the native animals and plants, mm. and even the names of their rulers at the time. Right, and so I guess we have so, so, so many hints. We have the information, but I guess, um, and I think that was the, like the biggest force of Egyptians where they kept records really well. And so, and I feel everything adds up to probably one particular place um, you know, in the northern Africa, thinking about uh, the, the Red Sea, where, you know, they would transport their, they would ship, uh, you know, their resources and stuff like that. And then, yeah, so looks like it was like the land of, uh, what do you say, the land of uh, the promised land or uh, <laughs> the land of milk and honey. And so, yeah, so it was a famous place, I would say, a very fashionable place to go. Uh, too, because of all everything that you would find there, so it makes sense. King Parahu and Queen Ati. Unfortunately, the relief neglected to provide an accurate map or directions to Punt. The last recorded trading expedition to the land of Punt happened in the 12th century BCE under the reign of Ramses III. Records of this trip make it clear that at least part of the journey involved sailing through the Red Sea, which would point to the land of Punt being located somewhere in the Arabian Peninsula. When friendly people ruled the lands of Nubia along the Nile River just to the south of Egypt, the Egyptians were able to use the river to reach the land of Punt. But when their southern neighbors were hostile, the Egyptians were forced to assemble their ships in the Nile, then disassemble them and transport the pieces a hundred miles over land to where the Nile meets the Red Sea at Sa. There, the ships would be reassembled and set out for Punt. And when they returned, the goods they brought back from the trading mission would then be carried back to Egypt using donkeys. Wow, that's crazy. You can just imagine how long an expedition was, you know? It must have taken months, if not probably a year. And, you know, keeping in mind that they had to dissemble the, the sheep and then carry it by hand. And, of course, I guess they used the slaves, but, but still, you know, so... Wow, that was another life, completely, a completely other life, and it was their way of life, and it was, um, it must have been a very difficult, but very interesting as well, uh, you know, but from our point of view, it looks difficult, but to them, it was a normal life, it was, it was okay to just dissemble the sheep and carry the wood all the way to the Red Sea, and then assemble it again, and, and so on and so forth, and on the way back, use the donkeys to 
bring me back to Egypt. So that's crazy. It's really, really interesting. So let me know if you're enjoying this episode. I love it. I'm learning, and I, we, this is, these are things that we don't really learn, and I feel it's important because it's part of the African culture, the African heritage, and it's really nice to to learn these things. Archaeologists have unearthed some amazing discoveries at Sa that support this theory, including ship timbers, stone anchors, and ropes dating back to the Middle Kingdom. They also uncover cargo boxes with painted hieroglyphs that read Wonders of Punt, as well as pieces of ebony and obsidian that they assume came from Punt since they weren't native to Egypt. Even with the wealth of evidence uncovered at Sa, experts still couldn't agree on where exactly the land of Punt was located. In the 1960s, German anthropologist Rolf Herzog declared that the land of Punt must have been located along the upper Nile just south of Egypt based on the plants and animals depicted in the relief paintings and other sources. However, the reliefs also clearly showed travel by sea and this location would not involve sea travel, so the mystery remained unsolved. In the 1970s, British Egyptologist Kenneth Kitchen noted that the land of Punt was unlikely to have been located in the Arabian Peninsula, and he used linguistic evidence to support his theory. He explained that the ancient languages of the Arabian Peninsula did not have a hard P sound, so it would be unlikely that both the name for the civilization and the name of one of their rulers would start with the letter P. After four decades of researching and writing about the land of Punt, Kitchen concluded that it must have been located in present-day eastern Sudan or northern Ethiopia. Rather than oh. resolve the question, Kitchen's theory yeah. only spawned more alternative ideas about the location of the land of Punt. Yeah. One of the most interesting and controversial ideas is that the land of Punt never actually existed at all, except in the myths and imaginations of the ancient Egyptians. An alternate ancient Egyptian name for the land of Punt translates to land of the gods, and the sources allude to the fact that the Egyptians believed that they originally came from the land of Punt, the divine mother goddess of wow. the ancient Egyptian religion, Hathor. Yeah, so you see, there are so many different theories, and it's really interesting. Um, but if, if this land actually existed, it's somewhere in the north of Africa, you know, Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, most likely Somalia. I mean, there's so many conclusions which come to probably Somalia. But then also, maybe it was just, you know, an imagination of the Egyptians. That's where uh, they came from, you know. And so it's complex. Okay, I know. <laughs> I know, but very interesting. Was said to have come from Put. And the Egyptians seem to consider Punt to be the origin of their culture. Mm -hmm. An ancient Egyptian song references Punt the way someone might have mentioned heaven in a modern love song. The lyrics say, When I hold my love close and her arms steal around me, I'm like a man translated to Punt, where the world suddenly bursts into flower. Whether this means that the land of Punt was the ancestral homeland of the people mm -hmm. who would later found Egypt or simply a mythical land of the gods is still unclear. Even in more recent years, the question of the location of the land of Punt remains a hotly debated one. A 2003 paper by Dimitri Mix revisited the idea of Punt being located on the Arabian Peninsula, this time placing it in Yemen, which Mix believes is the only location on the peninsula that is situated correctly relative to Egypt while being in contact with the Near Eastern and Mediterranean neighbors. This theory was further supported by Stanley Bolanda, who reinterpreted some text from Hatshepsut's relief about where the trading party made camp. Rather than pitching tents by the sea, he read it as pitching tents on both sides of the sea. If in fact the land of Punt is located on the Red Sea, then there's only one place that could match the description, the Straits of Bab el Mandeb, where present-day Djibouti and Yemen face each other across a narrow channel of water barely as wide as the English Channel. While it does seem that experts are getting closer to coming to a consensus about the location of the land of Punt, archaeologists have yet to unearth any hard evidence of settlement in any of the proposed locations. Archaeology in the Arabian Peninsula and the Red Sea area is still in its early days, so hopefully future digs will unearth new evidence to help us finally locate the land of Punt. Mm -hmm. Until then, scholars will continue to debate the location of the land of Punt. Whether it turns out to have been in Syria, Somalia, Yemen, Ethiopia, Arabia, or even just in the imagination of the ancient Egyptians, we'll just have to wait to find out for sure where the mysterious land of Punt was and where it went. Now go check out one of our... Yeah, so before we end the video, yeah, I feel the... Because when you talk about the land, it's a diverse place. So it could be probably all these places that it go that could be the land of Punt. I don't know, but it would make sense as well just to know um, the land of Punt is 
uh, different countries and it was one common land uh, because just before we put the borders and stuff like that in Africa and so it would make sense it would make sense I wouldn't be surprised so I guess we just have to wait and for you know the the, <laughs> the 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 researchers to do their job and probably give us an answer someday and so until then i hope you enjoyed my reaction i hope you learned something new let me know what you think about the land of pond and let me know if you knew about this mysterious place that disappeared uh from, i don't know where from where i don't know what happened but it just disappeared from history and that's how uh it is so uh, guys, so thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you're not subscribed, let, please subscribe and help me reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of October. Why not? So until next time, guys, it's your girl, Connie, and bye.